Um, good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. I decided that I would make you another video, and this video that I'm making you is about the competition in Kaggles, the tabular competition for January 2021. Um, I would like to say that I have entered a few competitions in Kaggles. I entered all the ones that I could. I entered the Titanic competition, the Amy's House Prize competition, the Course Era competition, the um, Natural Language Processing competition, the um, MNEST competition. I entered all of the competitions that I possibly could enter, but when they started getting into gaming, well, I'm not much of a gamer, so because I'm not much of a gamer, I didn't really do much with those competition questions and um, I don't have the power on my computer to get involved with graphics so I haven't done much with the graphics competitions I haven't done much with the tensorflow competitions and I will say the thing about Kaggle is they have these little micro courses that you can take which I suppose I should take a micro course but basically what I do is if I want to know how to do something, I'll just look it up on the internet or watch a video or something else. But um, I don't find Kaggle to be that good with um, teaching people how to actually program, how to actually program in data science. They have the competitions but they don't really give you instructions on what to do. They just tell you to look at other people's notebooks. But if other people's notebooks aren't any good, then you know you're not gonna you're not gonna get very far in it. So what I've done is I've made this video on this tabular competition for January 2021. And so if you don't know how to use Kaggle Jupyter Notebook, then this is really good video to look at because I give you instructions on how to do it. Now I made my um, Jupyter Notebook on Kaggle public so I'm looking at it and it says I've had 10 views so far. So 10 people have viewed my Jupyter Notebook on Tabular January 2021 and I had a public score of 0.70267 and you think, oh, that's terrible, that's awful. Well, the best score was 0.69. So even though I felt like I didn't score very well, I'd scored really well. I was 164. When I checked my position on the leaderboard, I was 164. So although I wasn't a winner, I was um, a good score. And so... I just ticked on the box to make that my submission because the best score was 0.69 and my score was 0.70 and so it was one point lower than the best score so I just thought well I'll just leave it the way it is leave it how it is and I'm 16 I think I was 164 so what we'll do is we'll go over the Jupiter notebook unfortunately I can't go in with you how to actually open the notebook because I've done all that but if you go into the competition question there will be a little black button where you can open your own Jupyter notebook and when you open your own Jupyter notebook it's not that hard to open your own Jupyter notebook then you can actually uh, start programming in Python which is what I do. I program in Python. So you can see here, you can see here, I've got my Jupyter Notebook. I'm sharing it with other people. I've had 10 views so far, and it's the Tabular Playground series. So I've decided that every month I'm going to enter their Tabular competition, Tabular Playground competitions, because that's something I can do with the memory capacity that I have on my computer. So you can see I submitted it. It's really easy to submit it as well. Uh, when you want to submit it, then what you do 
as you you'll edit it and then when you finish editing it you press save and then when you finish saving it it will let, allow you to view it and when you view it you can actually submit it so maybe maybe someday i'll write i'll make a video on how actually actually how to write a Kaggle program how to actually write a Kaggle program from beginning to finish but at the moment I do a lot of copy and pasting because it's easier to copy and paste and you know you're not going to make a mistake if you copy and paste so the first thing that we did on this program is we imported our libraries so we imported NumPy and Panda NumPy is your mathematical function and pandas does your is your does your pre-processing processing of the data so after we've imported our libraries you load and read the data sets so because we're on the Kaggle Jupyter notebook you have to say import os dir file things and that's there for you so that's all you have to do is just copy and paste that in line of code and it'll do it for you and you have to do that because you're using Kaggle's Jupyter Notebook. So now we load and read our data sets and train equals pd read dash csv and it gives you the um, path and what you do is you just copy and paste the path here into here so you can read every single file. So we've got our train file and all it is is a bunch of numbers and it just says you get an ID number and you get a count one to count five and then you get a target. So this is a regression problem. So that's what we're working on is a regression problem. So you get all of these numbers and all of these numbers get, are going to give you a target. You look at your test file. Your test file is the same format as your train file except you don't get a target. Because what you have to do is you have to predict upon the target. Then the sample file is what Kaggle wants to see when you submit it. They want to see the ID number and the actual target. So the first thing that we've done after we read our train and test files into the system is we want to check what kind of uh, columns these are that we're looking at. And we've got one integer column and uh, the rest of them are floats, so that's good. We don't have any object columns that we have to um, convert to numeric, so that's good. Do the same thing with the test file. Test file is the same format as the train file, except for the fact that it does not have a target column. Now what we want to do is we want to check for any null values. So um, you do train.isNull.sum and that will tell you if there are any null values. There's not any null values that you have to impute, so that's good. Did the same thing with the test file. There's not any null values that you have to impute, so that's good. So now I th thought, well, I'll do some graphics here. So we use Seaborn. We use Seaborn, and then so we plotted what the actual target looks like. So you can see what the target looks like here. Now what we want to do is we want to define our X and Y. So id equals test.id, y equals train.target.values, x equals train.drop. You drop your id and your target, axis equals 1, x test equals test.drop id, axis equals 1. So we've defined our x and our y value. 
Now what we want to do is we want to put the X and the X test on the scalar. So we import standard scalar from sklearn. Scalar equals standard scalar. X equals scalar dot fit transform X. X test equals scalar dot transform X test. Because on um, one, X and X test have to be the same format. And you only fit and transform on X. And then you transform on X at test. So those are things that you need to keep in mind. And see, I didn't know any of that whenever I was learning how to do this. But I do now, and so that's why I'm just telling you how to do it. So now, after we scaled our X and our X test, we want to set X up for training and validation. And we're going to use train test split and sklearn. So... X train X val Y train Y val equals train test split X Y test size equals 10% random state equals one and then we check the shape of all of the files that we have created. Now what we do is we define model and I use his gradient boosting regressor because it's designed for large data sets and I've had a lot of good luck with it in the past. And whenever I use this and I fit it into X train Y train, I had a 13.53% accuracy. And I thought, oh my God, that's terrible. It's not working. It's not working. And I tried another model, MLPR. And I got a worse accuracy than that. And I tried a lasso and it didn't work at all. And so I thought to myself, I thought to myself, well, I don't care how badly I do. I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And I just decided that I would stick with this gradient boosting regressor. And I just decided I didn't care how badly I did on this competition that I was going to submit it. Now I predict on the validation set. And so on the validation set, we've got an 8.47%, which is worse. And you're thinking, oh my God, what have I done? What's happened here? Because I have even less accuracy on the validation set. And so <clears throat> this particular competition question, um, <clears throat> the error matrix is R and S E, root mean squared error. So I found the code for root mean squared error, and on root mean squared error, I got 0. 0.7. I got, yeah, 0. 0.7. And I thought, well, what's all that about? <clears throat> And But I'd already decided that I didn't care how badly I did on this competition that I was going to submit it anyway. So I put the validation set on a data set. So you can see, you can compare my predicted values to the actual values. Now I predicted on the test set. Final labels equals model dot predict x test. So this is your final labels. I put it on a data frame. I saved it to a CSV file, and here's the submission dot CSV uh, data frame that I created. So, and then what you could do if you wanted to do it, you could submit it, but I'm not going to submit it because I already have submitted it in the past. So I submitted it once, so I'm not going to submit it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and we're going to look at my submissions. And you can see that I submitted it once and I got a 0.70 percent percentile RMSE. And we can check it on the leaderboard. And the highest score was 0.69. So even though I thought that I had done really terrible, I didn't do that bad because the best score was 0.69. And okay, now I'm 179. I was 16 something, but now I'm 179. But I'm just going to keep it 
where it is because I'm going to concentrate on other things because I make blog posts. And so there you go. Yesterday was like 166 and today I'm 179. So obviously people had been working on this competition to try to improve their score. But I could try to improve my score, but I'm not going to because basically I want to write a blog post on this. And so I don't want to spend a lot of energy trying to improve my score when I can write a blog post and I actually get paid to write blog posts, but I don't get paid to enter these competitions. So I will be writing the writing a blog post on this. And when I write a blog post on it, I'll give you the... Um, web address to my uh, notebook so you can look at my notebook if you want to use it. It was a very good score. It wasn't a winner, but it was a very good score. So um, that that concludes this presentation. If you like my presentation, please like, subscribe, and share. If you want to keep receiving my videos, please click on the bell button because I was watching a YouTube video and they said that if you don't watch my videos, then after a while, then YouTube will just unsubscribe you from them. So if you want to keep receiving my videos, then you need to click onto the bell button and watch it, you know. And thank you so much for watching my videos. And if you like the work I do and you want to support me, I have my email address to my PayPal account in the description box below. Um, I don't have enough subscribers, so I can't monetize, which is why I have to ask for donations. And let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this video. If you've got any ideas how I can improve my score, certainly I'm open to that. And um, have a nice day.